old school bodybuilding clothing company. If it's been three and a half hours since you last ate protein, and now you're starting to freak out, you are old school. If watching someone sit on a hammer machine for five minutes between sets playing with their phone pisses you off, you are definitely old school. OSBBC.com for the hardest training athletes. Uh, you're funny. <laughs> Better than ever, and I got Lee Priest in his car. Just got off doing a little cardio. Now that you're back in full blown training and uh, making your comeback oh. here in 2021, will we see you on a stage in uh, in 21, or is it, or is it the comeback for the following year? Uh, following year, you, you might see me on stage handing out a trophy or something, or oh. wiping the sweat off the stage like one of those cleaners <laughs> do. You know? <laughs> <laughs> will you be wearing Will you be wearing a Sean Ray mask when you do it? Uh, only if I win. Only if I win, because you know you get in trouble for playing a character these days, Dave. You know, yeah. don't don't get in trouble these days. Well, well, Generation Iron is good on the clickbait. Let's just say that. I'm gonna have Tyler pull that story from Generation Iron, where they the title is Lee Priest mimics Sean Ray in quote black face during recent interview. Oh. Well, if you if you had mimicked him with a white face, I don't think people would have known it was Sean Ray, right? Well, look, this is, if I was to be Sean Ray as a white face, this is how I'd look with sunglasses on. I'd just be me with sunglasses, <laughs> wouldn't I? When you play a character, you get into character just like Robert Downey Jr. on right. Tropic Thunder did the whole body. It's like blackface, if you go back in history, is like the minstrels when they used to put boot polish on, yeah. do the big red lips, the big white eyes, yeah. and be like, mame, mame. Did and I, all this sort of did shit. I, hold on, did it, I ever tell you the story? It. I did my first bodybuilding show ever. I was like 168 mm -hmm. pounds at five foot ten, and so I, I come back from the show, and I'm all proud. You know, proud. I did the show. I, I, I didn't. I placed like sixth. I was really lean, but I wasn't. Didn't have enough muscle. So I show my dad the pictures, and you know, at the time you had the throwaway cameras with the little pictures. And no. anyway, <laughs> I, I, I show my dad a picture. The, the only thing he says, I'm there hitting a double bicep shot, all the poses. He's like, what's with all the tan on your face and your lips look white? He goes, you look like you're doing a minstrel show. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that was his only comment. <laughs> Obviously, I knew I didn't look that good. If that was his only comment, constructive criticism. But I think even Generation Iron put up a thing not long ago for clickbait saying bodybuilders are that scared of, black, of um, racism now. They don't tan their face anymore in case they're accused of doing blackface. So... You know, some bodybuilders are just tanning up to their neck it looks ridiculous. and leaving their face slider. Yeah. I'm like, whatever. I was like, bloody hell. It's like, well, in that case, every bodybuilder would be doing blackface, wouldn't they? Because we all tan up, we all yeah. do our faces. It's like typical clickbait from Generation Iron, who also Craig that worked for them, Generation Iron sent him out. He said, I was the nicest guy he met. My family was great and stuff like that. So... You know, Craig, who had to hang out with this racist Lee for a week doing my documentary. Oh, my God. Yeah. Why is it that um, you think, obviously, Generation Hired has it in for you because you, you put down the documentary that they did on you because they left out a lot of the key oh. interviews with oh. a lot of your exactly. friends and stuff. Well, I think it's just clickbait. That's why. And now this is the latest thing. And I said, you know, being a character when you get done up with a proper latex mask is being a character. It's not being blackface. You're not putting it on to be racist or say racist things and stuff like that. So they've really gone out now. If you read through their article, they've gone back to even when the refugees were coming here on boats years ago when there was an influx of refugees and they've taken comments yeah. from back then. And I think one of the, what was the one they mentioned about well, they said, look, I'll what? read a quote. It said, this, isn't the, this isn't, isn't the first offensive act by Lee Priest, to say the least. Oh. Lee, I, I've known you a long time. You're very offensive. You've been way more offensive than they're accusing you of being. <laughs> <laughs> the controversial yes. figure has, now they don't even use you, they don't even call you by name. The controversial figure has been shown mm -hmm. to push the envelope many times before, particularly with issues of race. 
So oh. obviously, you know, they, what they're doing is they're they're jumping into this uh, gener this generation of no tolerance, no ability uh -huh. to laugh at anything, no ability to, you know, what would they think of the um, uh, All in the Family TV show that took place back in the day, yeah. or the Jeffersons, or all those those great TV uh -huh. shows that were even the uh, Sanford and Son, you know, uh, it was when people when people could have a laugh because it was taken in right. comedy, it was done in laughter, it wasn't right. done in malicious or hate there's a big difference between well look how many comedians now if we even look at comedians still do race jokes some of the funniest jokes i hear are from chris rock and he's putting down white people and shit like that so it's like yeah and it's done in comedy i'm not like oh i hate chris rock because right. he made fun of the white people but i think they said something there too about terrorists and muslims and um i just want them to know that that's not a race that's a religion and i think my quote was i said not all Muslims are terrorists, but the majority of terrorists were Muslim, which is a fact. It's not like me making something up there. Right. It's just a fact. I said, you know, I know tons of Muslims who aren't terrorists, you idiots at Generation Iron. <laughs> so it's like... <laughs> and then the thing about the burqa, too, like, and he came down on them wearing a burqa. And if they go back to my proper quotes was, is a lot of people in Australia would get upset because here in Australia... If you go to a service station, even if you have like a motorbike helmet, but you can see your face, they will not turn the petrol pump on until you take your helmet off. You can't go into a bank here with that type of helmet on. You can't go into any government building. But yet if you've got a burqa where you can only see the eyes, right. you're allowed to. And I just said, listen, this is what gets people upset because you've got rules for one and rules for the other. I said, if I've if I got an open face helmet, and you don't turn the petrol pump on for me, but yet you're turned on for someone where you can't even see their face. I said, right. that's what upsets people. I said, I don't care if someone wears a burqa down the street in their house, wherever. I said, but if you're going to government buildings where Australians can't cover their face, then you shouldn't be able to go in with your face covered. <laughs> that's one rule for all. Yeah. Like if we go to their country, I, I'm sure my wife in certain parts of their country cannot wear a short skirt showing her arms wearing a bikini. You've got to dress to their standards. So when you come right. here, if we have rules saying you can't cover your face in a government building, you can't cover your face. Don't right. throw the, it's our religion thing at us. So I'm, again, Generation Iron, put it into context next time. I got a great story. I, you know, I never told this story and you just brought it up in my mind. When I was in my little stint in federal prison there, you know, the little prison camp I was in, uh, you know, we <laughs> were in cells. They, we, <laughs> it was basically like summer camp. So we... What, what the the people who had religious you know beliefs had a lot more rights. So a lot of guys, I believe, faked that they were parts of different religions so that they can get mm -hmm. extra privileges. And <laughs> this is very funny, but these one group of guys w w said that they were they had a, this group that were American Indians. They claimed, and they would go up and sit on the hill. And they would get to get out of some kind of like work duty and sit on the hill. See, I'm not kidding. In teepees, they they built their own teepees and and smoked the peace pipe. They had to smoke a peace pipe because they wanted to smoke tobacco. So they they say it's a, it's a religious ceremony, and they actually would sit up there for like two hours in the teepee a couple times a week and smoke the peace pipe. God knows what they were they're smoking. Really, there. They're really sending smoke signals. <laughs> Bring more drugs. Bring more drugs into the prison. I completely it blocked it out. I, there's, these guys were like rednecks from like, you know, Wisconsin and, and, and from like Alabama. And they're all in this TV from, like wearing Indian headdresses like. Uh, from the, Appala from yeah. the Appalachians. You should have joined, Dave. I should have. If I would have been there longer, I probably would have because. I was only there five months. I was just looking to mm -hmm. get out of there. But these guys were like, "We're in for two, three years. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're Indians. We're, I'm, you know, I got a relative who's a Cherokee, and I got to do my smoke signals. I mean, I got to do my peace pipe and, and sit in the teepee for a couple of hours every day." And it's funny. I think um, Generation I tried to bring up too. I had racist friends because I think I might have even said on your show, I said a long time ago that I have a friend that you know from Alabama area where you know would talk about stuff, and he would say, "Lee." When we talk about marriage and his children getting married, he goes, look, I'd prefer it if my daughter married a white guy. He goes, look, I have nothing against Asians, black people, Hispanics. If she falls in love with one of them and marries them, as long as he treats her right, I'm happy. But he goes, my preference, I'd prefer if she married a white guy. And people are like, well, your friend's racist. Your friend's racist. I said, why? 
if that's his preference but it doesn't happen, he doesn't care. I said, but why is it when you have Indians, some Chinese, Jewish people, some Japanese people, they have arranged marriages, they marriage with, marriage, marry within their race, and people go, well, it's just cultural. But if you're white and you want to marry within your race, that's racism. That's racism right. that you're marrying just white people. So they took that out of context once again, Generation Iron. Clickbait. Well, I think I, I don't even think it's clickbaitly. I think it all goes back to the fact that they don't like the fact that you criticized the the documentary that they made on you. I mean, very yeah. you know aggressively, I might add. And and maybe you had absolutely the right to do that because you were supposed to have final say on this documentary that was released, mm -hmm. and they you didn't. Well, who and, does? Well, who does a documentary and interviews old training partners that have known me since I was a child? See, from a kid growing up and you don't even put him in it, but yet you put Jay Cutler in. Yes, I know Jay just from contest, hello, you know, that sort of thing. But here you have people that have been in my life from a young kid and you right. leave them out. And then when it comes time, did I say, look, you didn't put this in, you didn't put that in. Oh, too late to go back now. Even the name, Lee Priest versus Bodybuilding. I said, that's even a shit name. It's like, it's not even a good name for the documentary. Right. But the good news is, like I said, it's being redone. And I heard those guys contacted me. Yeah, they said they're, they're going to be coming out there and shooting you. But yeah. I, but that's where I've I think talking, this motivation is. Had I've been you talking to my good friend Chris Cormier. Yeah. Don't tell me Chris is black now, Dave, or that's going to ruin it. And I can't be friends. You're not with him. allowed to say he's a he's a he's a black friend of yours because then that makes you more racist, according oh, to. Oh yeah, him. that yeah. makes it does too. Yeah, because it says. I have a black I'd like to ask fun. Chris. I bet you if I had Chris Cormier on here and I asked him if you were racist, he'd probably laugh his ass off. You know, if I if I asked Actually, him. Actually, Chris Chris said he'll come on the show on Friday and have that when we have a show Friday. But okay. I've been talking to Chris all the time, and you know, I've sent Chris a few photos, and that he can probably tell you I'm part black somewhere, Dave. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm sure. First of all, I'm sure if you were a racist, you probably wouldn't have lived with Paul Delat. I mean, that probably would not have now, happened. Actually, I actually let him live with me, see, because I'm that racist. Yeah. But here's the thing. Remember, remember I told you the story, Kurt, who I trained with, who's like a brother to me, yeah. and he was black. And over the years, because I don't care if someone's black, gay, transgender, I judge someone on their character. If you're a good person and you've got a nice heart, you help people, you're friendly, that's how I judge someone. Color or religion's the last thing I judge somebody on. Because like I said, assholes and pricks and... The C word, I won't say it so you don't get demonetized. Yeah. Don't c come in all shapes and colors and races and shit. But I used to get in trouble of black people because when they'd say to me, what's Kurt? I'd be like, what do you mean, what's Kurt? I say, Kurt's my brother, my friend. Yeah, but what is he? I'm like, well, what do you mean, what is he? Well, is he black or white? I say, well, he's black, but I don't see that. I, I look at Kurt and see Kurt, my brother, my friend. Well, if you don't see his color, you're denying his race, and that's racism. And I'm like, what? I just look at Kurt and see the person. I don't see, <laughs> I don't go, well, right. there's Kurt, my black brother. I say, there's Kurt, my brother. It's like, but I used to get in trouble. Well, by you denying his skin color, yeah. you're being racist. I'm like, oh, fuck, I can't win, can I? <laughs> you, know, you know what the funny thing is? And this is how I always, first of all, my father would have kicked the crap out of me if I did any, anything racist, which I really wasn't raised that way. My father uh -huh. was very liberal. But my, my, my point is that when I see, you know, the way I view life, you know, we're basically mm -hmm. um, spirits having or souls having a human experience. Basically, we're basically like some kind exactly. of an energy energy being in inside of a, a body of our choice that we picked, you know, and and mm -hmm. and, that, and we're having an experience there, and we might have another experience in another body. So to say a person when we and then when I identify Lee Priest, I don't identify you as your body. I identify you as the the spirit that's inside of you. There is no color. There is no race. There is no religion. Yeah. It's it's just you, and you could be in some kind of robot. You know your consciousness, and you're, you'd still be Lee exactly. Priest. Exactly. So this I don't. This is you just know, like a. This yeah. is just like an outer shell, like right. a fucking, like a costume, and we all have different costumes yeah. on and play different parts. It'd be like sitting inside <laughs> a different car. I hop into a Ferrari. Right. I'm still Lee, but now I'm in a Ferrari. But the only problem is when you get in the Ferrari, people go. Look at that asshole. Thinks he's good because he's in a Ferrari. <laughs> but yeah, it's like I said, I, I used to always, and I used to get looked at it all the time because in, in Australia, we didn't really have it here back then. But then as soon as I come to America, every form you'd fill out would say, you know, the yeah. race, Hispanic, you know, African-American. And every time I'd go to the very bottom, I'd draw my box 
and I'd write human and tick it and I'd <laughs> hand it into them and they'd go and just look at me and go, well, I'm human, aren't I? I n- I'd never, I never put Caucasian. You never put, any, just, you never put alien or anything like that on occasion? No, nah, always, always human. I'd okay. just write human, do a little box and tick it. <laughs> and that's how it should be. Well, I guess I, they reckon for senses, they say, well, so they yeah. know are we, different Lee, things, but. Are we as a society way, way too sensitive now about about these things? You can't. It's like it, it's like everything you say. You have to be so concerned about whether it's politically correct. Are you offending any group? Or yes. I mean, it, it, it's, it's nauseating way, way almost. Too. I find you can't be yourself. Whole, you know, this whole word offensive because like I'm offended by this. I'm offended by that. Well, what's really being offended? It's like I don't get offended. I might get up. I'm more not offended. I might get like upset if someone's rude to an elderly person or disrespects an elderly person. But offense is just like, what? What offends you might not offend. It's like a, you could watch a comedian on stage and laugh your head off. Somebody might go, well, that's not funny. But someone could be laughing their ass off at a joke that could be off color and shit like that. I just got actually sent a message today. There's a HBO show, a female comedian called um, Sam. Is it Sam? She's a black comedian on HBO. Oh. They asked me to come on the show to talk about race and stuff. Oh, really? <laughs> hey. Wow. That's cool. In New, in New York, they said, well, fly you here for the show. It's a very lighthearted comedy thing, just talking about race and that. I forget her name, Sam. I want to say Sam Jones or someone. She's a black comedian. Maybe, but yeah, I said, I'm Tyler in Australia. It might, it might be too far to fly me for that. But if I'm ever in America. You should go. Why not? Yeah. Do it. Because if I fly back home, then I got to go in quarantine for two weeks. Oh, uh, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, I forgot yeah, but about no, that. it's like it's like you said though. People now, it's like it's like almost how John and Chris got into an argument. It's like the whole thing racism. Like there's racism if you're saying I'm white, I'm better than you, or if someone's denied a job because of their race, no matter what it is, not just black, could be Hispanic, Asian, whatever. There's right. pure racism like that, but. I think what John was trying to say is it's being thrown around so much, whereas when it used to be, we can't call that a blackboard anymore, or that can't be called a blackberry, or this is like the whole race is now or just black and white cooking, the joke. Yeah. yeah, it's like when they start doing stuff like that, it is, I wouldn't say watering down, but it's just getting to a point where you can't say silly stuff, where it's like, who, who, who equates that with racism to what pure hatred racism is? And that shouldn't be allowed anywhere, but... When they just start doing little things like, well, you can't say that because it's racist. Or, like I said, I think it was even on Fuad's show, someone said about, oh, you must like, I think he said the guy, you must eat a lot of pasta and spaghetti because you're Italian. I think Ben might have said that. And Fuad's like, well, that's racism. I said, that's not racism saying Italians like pasta. It's true. It's (laughs) It's true. It's like people say, you Aussies all drink beer. I'm not offended going, I can't say that's racist saying we all drink beer because a lot of Aussies drink beer. They're like, there's a big difference between stereotypes and actual being racist. And I think it's all just, like you said, this whole cancel culture where I'm not sure if you saw it, was it last year, where we had grown adults, I mean, sending hateful messages and like death threats to a seven-year-old girl because she dressed up as Pocahontas. She's seven years old for Halloween. Right. Her favorite show is Pocahontas. So what'd she do? She got dressed up as Pocahontas, brought that skin tanning stuff that you can buy from any chemist or whatever yeah. to tan your skin. And the amount of hate this girl got, I'm thinking, if this girl was going to go off herself, she probably would because you had adults calling a seven-year-old racist and all she wanted to do was look like her favorite character, right. Pocahontas. To me, that's just crazy when that shit goes on like that. It's just ridiculous. <laughs> well, I think there's a lot of like media outlets that will jump on someone oh. because of that, like you said, to get clickbait, to get hits. Mm-hmm. Hey, we'll call this, look at this guy. Lee Priest is a racist because he said, because he put a black mask on to, to do a funny little skit. When in fact, they know that you're not a racist, but they're just, they're, there's two, it's a twofold thing. Let me get as much hits and, and people clicking on these articles as possible. And then let me get... Let me kind of kick Lee in the balls a little bit because he made fun of the documentary that we spent money on filming for him. And so that, so that people have agendas. A lot of times there's agendas in people who, especially media outlets, who point this stuff out. 
when they really don't believe it themselves, but they're just using it as, like you said, an ability to, hey, oh. here I am, come look at me. Mm -hmm. I want you guys to pay attention to me. No one's yeah. really paying attention to me because I'm not doing anything of value. So I'll just kind of, I'll kind of like take the guy who's the most popular guy on the block and try to, you know, put a black eye, give him a black eye or something uh, like that. Well look, how far, well, look how far they even go back these days now with famous people where they must have people that go through messages and stuff they said 10 years ago 15 years ago remember was it um chris rock he said he's not apologizing because he made a joke about i think 10 years ago if my son was gay he made a joke about it oh mm -hmm. he's homophobic he's homophobic and stuff like this we have a guy here in australia he's a football player they, they were going to re-sign him but they didn't cause of the outrage because they said of his homophobic tweets now this guy falau He's like from the islands, like he's to totally religious, like one of those into the Bible, you know, religious family right. from the islands and stuff. And all he did a year or two ago, he just put up a thing from the Bible saying fornicators, like adulterous drug users. He had a list of, you know, how it says these people would be going to hell. And on the list was homosexuals. And my God, the outrage of his homophobic tweet and post he mentioned the list of 12 different things, but because the whole homosexual transgender's the thing in the news lately, that's all they focused on was his homophobic tweet. And he goes, look, I've got friends that are homosexuals and gay and shit. He goes, I don't judge them. I'm friendly to them. But when their judgment comes, I believe that God would judge them and they go to hell because he's so, such into that Christianity and Bible stuff. Right. So he just put a quote from the Bible and, oh, my God, he, they wanted to resign him, but the public outcry, how can you sign this guy because he's so homophobic and his tweets are homophobic when, like I said, he listed 12 different things of people that are going to hell. And shit, I used to make a joke all the time. I'd say, listen, when you really look at the people that are going to hell and people always say to me, Lee, you're going to hell, you're going to hell. I said, well, that's great because, you know, the people who don't be look like Jewish people, they say the Jews were going to hell. I said, well, if the Jews are going to hell, they can cater, the gays can decorate, and it'll be one big fucking party. I can't wait to get there. And trust me, I know some religious people, if they're in heaven, I don't want to be there. Could you imagine being stuck in this place of eternity with a bunch of wankers like that? I'm like, holy. Oh. Well, and you know the thing is, too, I, my, I fa wondered, yeah, my father always told me, don't talk about politics and don't talk about religion because you will no. always offend someone. And he was right. And, I, and, and that's why I never talk about it because I really, it, to me, it, it has nothing to do with what I'm doing on this channel or on any of my mm -hmm. channels that I, that, I, that I put out, even my social media. It, it really mm -hmm. is not my business to promote my religious and spiritual thoughts. If, if, if I happen to have you know, a, a video where I do that, yeah. but I don't, but I don't I, criticize, I, you know what, because I don't care. Yeah. I don't want to argue religion with you because you have your beliefs and I have my beliefs and I don't want to, I don't want to argue politics with you because you have your, your belief and I have my belief. And the truth is, it really doesn't matter if we have the same political or the same religious beliefs. Mm -hmm. We can still be very good friends because exactly. it, it, it's a different, the way we're, it we're is, at a different level, but, you know, our friendship. Do you, find it, do you find the way it is now, though, and this is the thing, it's like, to me, it's the media beat up because... Yes, racism was terrible back in the early days. I noticed when I was there, it wasn't as bad. It was getting better. It was slowly getting better and getting better because, you know, I'm a firm believer here in Australia, probably same as America, 98% of people aren't racist. They go about their daily life. They go to work. They want what's best for their family. They don't care if anyone's black, white, Hispanic, Asian. Everyone just gets along. But as you see now, because of all this cancel culture, the PC stuff, the media is making this bigger divide. And even like you said before, even when it came to politics, you could, you could be a Democrat or Republican and no one cared. OK, we still got along. But even now you have people who are Democrats or Republicans attacking each other, beating each other up on the street because the media is just making it worse and worse and worse. And people are starting to, oh, he used to be my neighbor. I don't talk to him now because he likes Trump or I don't like him because of, right. it's like the whole media is just making it worse and worse. And we're actually going backwards rather than moving forward. It seems like we're going backwards when it's coming to all this stuff now. And right. the whole thing about race and stuff is like I said, I couldn't care what somebody is. Like I said, I grew up in a family with a father that's a homosexual, a cousin that was transgender, all people of different 
races and stuff. It's to me, it's like I, as I said, I judge someone on their character. If someone's nice to me, I'm nice to them. Oh shit! I've had people shit on me, and I still give them a second, third chance, and mm-hmm. probably still get shit on again. So right. I was I was always brought up where my grandfather, our house was open to everybody. It was an open door. It would even I don't know if you do it now, but he'd leave the key in the door at night time in case anything was wrong and someone needed a place to stay. It's like, <laughs> you know, the key's always, the door's always open. If you need help, come on in. So this whole thing, Generation Iron goes on. Good try, Generation Iron. Good try. <laughs> nice job. <laughs> and I got news for people. You'll have the black mask on again and you'll probably have other masks on. And I know you're, we got, we haven't, oh, we haven't featured ordered, you as, as the, as the transgender a, woman yet, right? You're, you're planning that one. Well, I got that, yes. I've ordered an old man mask. You should, you should see this old man mask. It's like really old and shit. <laughs> now I'll have old people complaining that I'm making fun of them. And yeah. I've got an old lady one because it's so good. It's like the proper latex that you're going to really put on. Yeah, and I'll get dressed up as a transgender. I'll have them hate me next. <laughs> Generation Iron, get get ready to do another post. Lee hates transgenders. Okay, <laughs> do, do that one next when some of the transgender yeah. and gay people are my biggest fans and I love them. <laughs> I get on great with them. I get on great with them all. <laughs> but the thing is, too, this is a stupid thing. I've been so open in my book and my life and, you know, I mean, the interviews I do. Yeah. If I was racist, I wouldn't hide it. That's the right. thing. I would not hide the fact that I was racist. If that's right. who I am and they were my strong beliefs and I believed that, I'd say, listen, hate me all you want, but this is the way I am. It's the way I was brought up. Yeah, I'm racist, blah, blah, blah. Tough luck. It's right. like right. I would not care. It's like here's my KKK membership card. Look. I'm moving up the Look, Grand Wizard. The truth is, I know a lot of people in our industry <laughs> that I know, or I've heard a lot of racist comments come out of their mouth, and I don't think it would, and I, and I can absolutely say that if these people were judging different races, that they wouldn't, they would, that racism wouldn't come out in their decisions because they, they see bodybuilding differently, but they probably wouldn't, you know, marry or want their kids to be involved with, you know, cross mm-hmm. race type relationships because they've just been raised a certain way and, they, and they're, you know, they have a, a distorted view of that. So body, when we always say bodybuilding is immune for racism, yeah, it is because I think it's judged by who's got the best physique. And that's always been the history of our sport, you know. But there are racist people in our sport for sure, you know, on, in both, yeah. in all races. I'm sure there's black people that are racist towards white people and white people that are racist towards black people and white people who don't like Asian people. I'm sure it goes yeah. every way. But, I, but at the end of the day, the sport is judged, you know, the way it's supposed to uh-huh. be judged based well, on you, who's I got the you best body, when I, you know. I told you before when I used to train with Kurt at the gym, yeah. Kurt, who's my brother, who, sure. okay, just so I don't get in trouble, who is black, he was trained me at the gym, and when we are trained together, this, my first sort of inclination to it was when we trained at Gold's, and he was training with me, other black guys would yell out across the gym, why are you training with that white boy for? You're a <laughs> fucking sellout trainer with the whitey. I'm like, what? Why are they saying that there? And it really upset him. He's like, oh, I don't know, because I'm training with you. But don't yeah. call him a sellout because he was training with the white guy. I'm like, right. well, that's just stupid. I said, if it bothers you, we don't have to train together. He's like, no, fuck them. He goes, you're my friend. I don't give a shit what they think. So right. it is, to me, it's just stupid. Like I said, you judge someone on their character and how they are and how they treat other people and shit. You know, this thing here, to me, is just a fucking outer coding. It's what's on the inside that yeah. fucking matters. So. I, bet it, I bet if someone, I bet if a, if a real racist life guy's life depended on it, and the and the a white guy who hates black people and had a doctor who was black and the guy was the best surgeon in the world and he cured <laughs> cancer. I Save guarantee his, his whole yeah. his whole outlook on the surgery would be completely different, especially if the guy cured him and, and and you know cut out the cancer and the guy survived. So people are just morons. Wait and minute, unfortunately, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait unfortunately, a minute, Lee, I blame how they're raised. Really, how you're raised brainwashes you in a certain direction. Mm-hmm. And I think that but if you're exactly. raised by kids. Racist kids don't people. see kids don't see color. Look no. at kids when they're young. You could you could put kids in like a school setting or a playgroup setting, black, white, Asian, whatever. Kids just play. They just play with each other. Like you said, it's not till later on where someone's got into their ear and say, "Well, you can't hang out with them because it is." It, it, it is taught because when kids are young, you see young kids, no matter what race they are, they're just having fun playing together with their mates, and it's as simple as that. But so it is. 
it is taught whether due to some things I know where that might be, I know, I wouldn't say some are racist, but I know both where it's black and white, where some people are being attacked by certain groups and they're a bit more wary of them because that group of people has attacked them, but I still wouldn't say they're racist and stuff. But no, I said it's taught because, like I said, how many times do you see young kids? They don't see colour and shit like that. It's not till later on in life someone's got into their head and changed them and sort. well, you yeah. can't do that because of this or that because of that. So it's ridiculous. Hold on a minute. There's some, there's some young black kids walking through the car park here. I'm just going to make sure they're not going to steal that car over there. I don't want to, st- I don't want to stereotype. I'm just checking them out. <laughs> Well, Lee, I appreciate you taking uh, some time out of your workout. I know that you're on the... Oh, now you look like Eminem or John Cena. I don't know. I'm not sure which ones, but... Wear it up. What is it? I can't do the West Side. <laughs> Butterfly. I don't know. He's the church. He's the steeple. Open the door. He come to people. I don't fucking know. Yeah, you look... Actually, you look like Jamie Kennedy. Remember Jamie Kennedy used to do that, play that, like a white rapper? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I remember Jamie Kennedy. What was that, what was was that uh, movie he was in that, that was really funny? Oh, my God. Uh, he was in a couple... The what first one where he one played too? the like the yo man, you know where he was playing the. Yeah, one of the yeah yeah. <laughs> I think that was it. Who was, who was the other guy that got kicked off TV? He used to have a show like that. He was in Freddie Got Fingered. Who was that other guy? Oh, oh. Tom Green was out of his mind. I, yeah. I loved him. Yeah. he was funny. But remember, he got kicked off TV because <laughs> there's a remember he used to do those silly skits on his TV yeah, show. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and he went to a, he actually the thing that the straw that broke the camel's back was. The last TV show he did, he went to a bar mitzvah dressed as Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> See, you were, just I'm Jewish too- and I can laugh at that because it doesn't matter. It, it, it's re- no, he's just being that's absurd. Funny. That's funny. That's funny. How about like- Borat? I mean, uh, you know, he's great. I mean, you, you could say you're offended oh. by him, right? Making fun of... But, well, that's what I mean. If you don't like it, you can change the channel. And right. it's like I said... Anything can offend anyone these days. That's the sad thing, and it's so easy just to come down on people. It's like it's like people that when we do these shows, I still read the comments, and I still see the same people every week. Them fucking dickheads. Look at this. Look at that. It's like, why do you watch? Why do you watch every week then if you don't like us? It's like right. when people used to complain about Howard Stern all the time. Yeah. How many other stations you got to listen to? Why do you listen to them? And these people too, the ones that say they don't like you. They'll know word for word what we They'll say. They'll listen more. That was the, <laughs> exactly. that was the Howard Stern statistic. They said that, that the, nothing? the people who watch yeah. the longest are the people who hate you the most. And when they asked mm-hmm. why are you listening to him if he doesn't if you don't like him, their answer on survey was to see what he'll say next. <laughs> I know. I, I, I don't get because I get all the time even with followers. I'm like, then why do you follow me when I do my lives on Instagram? I hear a dickhead and shit. I'm thinking, then why do you follow me? Because I've said before. I don't like tennis, so let's pick tennis. And then you got Djokovic or Nadal. I would never follow them on Instagram and go, right. well, wait a minute. Nadal's just come on live. <laughs> you suck at tennis. You're a fucking loser. Your backhand sucks. Imagine just sitting there abusing someone you hate for hours when you don't even like the sport or like them. So deep down, I think deep down, the haters are truly the biggest fans, Dave. Absolutely. They just don't, want to, just don't want to admit it. So 100%. 100%. Yeah, there's some guy out there that was criticizing me on Fuad's show the other day, and, and someone sent me the link, and I'm like, my advice is my new, my new enlightened look now that I have, I have a thyroid cancer is beware the false prophets, especially the ones with the Jesus beards. You know, those, those did, stay did, far did. away from those guys. I did, I did watch Fuad's show the other day, and someone mentioned your name, and yeah. he moved on very quick. He goes, not, not going there. And well, because <laughs> Fuad and I don't have a res- mutual respect for each other, so we don't, you know, we don't mm-hmm. want to you know, engage in that, you know, especially, but the, the bottom line is that the, it's the people out there that have no back, no educational background. They have their self-proclaimed, you know, gurus. They, you know, they want to take shots at the people who are very knowledgeable and established in this, in this business, whether it be me in the sense of a knowledge provider mm-hmm. or you in the sense well, of a legend in bodybuilding, because by taking a shot at you or me, it, it, it in their mind, it validates them more. And so no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say I'm a legend in bodybuilding, Dave. I'm just a guy that had a pro card. No, really. you're a legend. I'm, I'm a fucking idiot in bodybuilding. That's what I like to be known as, the dickhead. I'm very happy to wear <laughs> that title. Don't. But there's a the thing, see. I, I, when I got did up as Fuad and did the whole makeup, why didn't I get hate mail? 
look at Lee being mean to the Muslims and stuff like that. It was done in fun. I was dressed up as a character so you know who I am. Right. The same as Sean Ray. Because like I said, if I was to be Sean Ray, this is me. Sean Ray wears glasses. If I went like this, who am I, Dave? <laughs> well, Lee you're Lee with sunglasses yeah. on. It doesn't quite come across the same. You know what the funny thing is? If you dressed up as me and made fun of me, I would laugh at it. I would think it was funny because I, I have a sense of humor about myself, whereas some people get very well, uptight about it, you know, and, well, and, and they, they don't. Alan, let me, let me see what I got to do for you. That's it. I'm, I'm tough. All, I've seen, I've seen, I've seen the comments. I got to order a Crypt Keeper mask. That's right. I'm a I little gotta... tough to do because. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I can do you. Crypt Keeper yeah. mask. I'm going to ch- shave my hair shorter. All right. I'm going to go. What's that guy who got banned? I'm going to get a pillow and yeah. go back to the 90s, Dave, and put a pillow up there. There you go. All Columbo. right. That's good. See? You got yeah, you you to you gotta imitate me that's when I was like 300 pounds. Though. You can't imitate me now, though, because I'm like, I'm too normal looking now, you know. I think if you yeah, did me know. like in, in like, you know, when I was like crazy big, that would be funnier. I can do it. I could do the challenge. I can do it. You can even paint yourself green, see. so you can be the the Palumbo Hulk or something like that. You know. Yeah, that's the thing to see because you and I can laugh at ourselves. I make fun of myself all the time, and when people make fun of me, I still reckon the best one ever was when Vegan Gaines did the tattoo on his face of me. Yeah, that was pretty whole, funny. Yeah, uh, the whole Australian band. I thought that was great for someone to take that, make that time oh, yeah. effort to go to go into that. I'm thinking fantastic. I forgot, I forgot he did that. That was very good. Yeah, that yeah. was ingenious. Yeah. It's like, and I laughed at it. I thought it was funny. It's like people just need to sit back and have a laugh. At, you know, they take life so serious, people. That's what needs to happen because don't you know, life, take yourself life, so serious. You're right. Exactly. Life's too short and so am I. So I get told. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> People are like, Lee, do stand-up comedy. Do stand-up comedy. I'm like, well, I could be standing up, but you still wouldn't see me. Uh, People are like, stand up, you dickhead. I am. I'm only short. Uh, people need to laugh. That's all I can say. But thank you, Generation 9, for giving me more followers. I got a lot more followers on Instagram again today. <laughs> Lee with that black face. Black face. Oh. Black face. Now, is that, it's like you said. Now, so you can wear whatever mask you want. It just can't be black because if it's black, it's racist. If you would have worn a green mask, since there's no green people that we know about there, you're not offending anyone, right? So... Um, exactly. Well, I've ordered the old ladies' mask and the old men's mask and all the other stuff. You're that's allowed fine. to make fun of old people because because everyone makes fun of old people, right? That that's that's universal. It doesn't matter if what race or religion. You're, everyone gets old, so that's okay. But uh, God yeah, forbid you made fun of like uh, you know uh, uh, you know a woman. Or you made mm-hmm. fun of like a, a religious, you know, character. Like we 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 had this RX Muscle uh, Heavy Muscle TV show once, where I was doing like ask. I think it was like a, it was some kind of a quiz show, and I had uh, Jimmy the Bull dressed as Moses. I think um, <laughs> no, not Moses. He was dressed as was he? What was he dressed as? I think Jeff the producer was dressed as Moses, uh, and and. Uh, <laughs> I had another person dressed as like Jesus. Oh no, no! Jimmy the Bull was dressed as Gandhi. Oh, and, where's the religion? Did you get religious hate mail? From yeah, that I one? had India. Yeah, I, I, every race, uh, and I was asking them, you know, like questions, and they had to answer, you know, in, in character, and it was hysterically funny. I don't think that would fly nowadays. People would get completely offended by it, but oh, but, it would, but it's it, funny. It's like well, look at the old movies, like The Life of Brian and stuff like that. It's like even. When you're talking about the Jeffersons, yeah. but even with all these women's lib now, could you imagine like shows like Married with Children? Oh where my God! Fucking yeah. Owls tell and peg. I'll give you five across the eyes and yeah. this sort of stuff. It, yeah. It's like that was funny, but now, oh my God! Imagine that being on TV. And then yeah, that is a guy Moses. Now he had some followers. That bastard wandered around how long? 40, 40 years in the friggin' desert, and these people kept following him. Now, after two years, when you think this prick doesn't know where he's going, 40 years later, they're still following him around the bloody desert. It's like, where was God? Hey, mate, you're going the wrong way. You've passed this sand hill six times by now. Like, Jesus. 40 years wandering the desert. Tell some take followers. yourself so goddamn seriously, and uh, you will have a much, much blasphemy. healthier outlook on life. You'll be happier. You'll be lighter. You'll feel peaceful. And on that note, Lee Priest, thank you so much for joining us. I'm Dave Palumbo with another edition of Iron Rage. Thank you. Thank you. 
Yeah, just put the cross over there. I get the gasoline. We'll settle on fire in a minute. Yeah, I'm finished with. I'm finished with Dave. All right, get it up. 